Hello, my name is Dorin Comaniciu. I'm responsible for artificial intelligence and digital innovation at Siemens Healthineers, being based in Princeton, New Jersey, USA. At Siemens Healthineers, we have a strong focus on innovation to improve the quality of care and reduce its cost. See, for example, the striking difference between one of our first head MRs taking 9080 and the recent diffusion tensor imaging scan of my brain highlighting with incredible detail my neural tracts. Today, I will talk about artificial intelligence for healthcare. Since data plays such an important role in AI, it is important to think of this subject based on levels of data generation and consumption. We consider four hierarchical levels of increasing complexity and wider implications. At the first level, we have the data generation, scanners and instruments. AI contributes here to workflow automation, faster acquisition and reconstruction, and to triage acute cases. Next level involves the immediate use of data, such as systems for reading, reporting, and guidance in the operating room. One level up, complexity increases, data being integrated around the patient. This is the level for predicting, planning, and prescribing the right treatment at the right time for the individual patient, meaning precision medicine. In this context, we focus not only on statistical models, but also on mechanistic, physiological models that lead us to the concept of health digital twin. The top level involves the analysis of patient cohorts related to population health, outcome analysis and meaningful use, and also AI for process optimization. Let us start with the topic of workflow automation. We have now in our portfolio, the first patient positioning system for computer tomography powered by AI. A 3D camera produces on the spot the 3D avatar of the patient that helps computing the isocenter and verifying the direction of the scan. A precise isocenter helps reducing the radiation and improving the quality of acquired images. Very recently, we have introduced a new radiography system that provides new levels of patient understanding and automation. For example, the system performs AI-based thorax detection and sets the corresponding optimum acquisition area, the so-called collimation. The radiation is focused only on the relevant area, and the goal is to acquire an image containing all necessary information with the lowest possible radiation exposure. Here is an example of a triaging system. It has been trained with more than 1 million images, 20,000 non-contrasted CT head studies to detect the presence of brain hemorrhage. Such system can run on the CT scanner to raise a flag when hemorrhage is detected, promoting the emergency reading of the case in question. A similar example is for NeuroMR. This is actually my recent brain exam based on multiparametric NeuroMR. And to characterize my data, we train a network that discriminates between normal or abnormal brain. In addition, the system highlights acute abnormalities such as acute infarctions, acute hemorrhage, and mass effect. The result for this particular scan is that my brain is normal for my age. Another application of AI is um, AI-driven optimization of the visualization of bony structures by unfolding them from 3D into a 2D plane. In a recent study, the authors report higher, higher sensitivity for rib fracture detection and reduction in reading time for trauma CT on the basis of unfolded views of the ribs they were produced by an automatic machine learning algorithm. And to conclude with systems that are close to the scanners, here is a system for cardiac MR analysis that relies on 60,000 expertly annotated images to compute multiple measurements from Cine MR data. The showcase data is actually from my cardiac MR exam, the algorithm computes inline 
uh, 193 measurements, including the derivation of left ventricle radial, radial and circumferential strain. This is a collaboration with the UK Biobank Consortium. Moving now to the next level, to reading and reporting, here is a fine example of our quest to do more for the patient by reducing the number of prostate biopsies. And this is the prostate AI-based MR, uh, multiparametric, uh, prostate AI based on multiparametric MR data. The system is using both anatomical and functional information to isolate the prostate, detect the lesions, and classify them into malignant and benign. For radiation therapy, the organs and anatomy is a risk in the vicinity of the targeted tumor have to be delineated such that the radiation planning system minimizes the impact of the radiation on them. This is a time consuming process that our latest system trained on 4.5 million images has the potential to eliminate. The system delineates 71 organs and anatomies at risk. Concerning coronary CTA, we are in advanced development to automatically detect and classify stenosis and plaques in coronary CT angiography based on deep learning using recurrent neural networks with long short-term memory. Note that such system is based on multiple AI algorithms, including robust uh, landmark detection based on deep reinforcement learning, heart isolation, central line tracing, Luma segmentation and stenosis detection classification. One potential representation of the coronary CTA stenosis findings is obtained by unfolding the coronary similarly to the ribbon folding and displaying the stenosis on the resulting 2D image. A special machine learning based application is EasyValves, which processes uh, transesophageal echocardiography data to compute the models of the mitral and aortic valves in 3D and to extract multiple clinically relevant measurements. The modeling of the valves is challenging to do the topological changes during the cycle of valve opening and closing. The AI Red Companion is a new family of AI powered cloud based, cloud based augmented workflows that help reduce the burden of basic repetitive tasks and have the potential to increase diagnosis, pre, diagnostic precision when interpreting medical images. We have recently productized a new AI Red Companion chest X ray software that offers decision support for radiographic thorax images based on machine learning. The software acts as a concurrent reader, uh, highlighting lesions, consolidations, atelectasis, the pleural effusion, pneumothorax with confidence scores. It has been trained on more than 24,000 manually annotated images. AI Red Companion Chess City has the ability to provide lung lobe segmentation, lung lesion detection and measurements, heart segmentation and calcium detection, aorta segmentation, diameter measurements, and vertebral body segmentation measurement. One can see these functionalities in the running video. Uh, we should keep in mind that this is one of the first CHSCT systems that covers not only the line nodules, but also incidentals such as emphysema, low bone mineral density, and coronary calcium. Everything has been trained on more than 3.5 million images. Let me present now two prototypes that support clinicians analyze chest CT scans to detect and quantify airspace disease associated with COVID-19. Given the input volume, the first prototype segments and quantifies abnormal CT patterns commonly present in COVID-19, namely granular glass opacities and consolidations. The second prototype distinguishes COVID-19 from other lung diseases such as COVID-19, non-COVID-19 pneumonia and interstitial lung disease and normal scans. 
This is a collaboration that started at the beginning of March 2020 with multiple clinics in Europe, US, and Canada. It was an inspiring effort that moved, that moved so fast from the project definition to study clearance by each institution's ethics board to data clearance and annotation, prototype design, training, validation, testing, and deployment. Let me get into detail about the first effort, quantification of tomographic patterns associated with COVID-19 from chest CT. Given the novelty of the topic, the first questions that we had to address together with the clinics were to define disease severity measures that correlate with outcome and build a system to compute them automatically through AI. Since high opacity abnormalities such as consolidations were shown to correlate with the disease severity, we decided to compute two pairs of measurements. The first measure, percentage of opacity, percentage of high opacity, is a global measure that quantifies both the extent of COVID-19 abnormalities relative to the volume of the lung and the presence of high opacity abnormalities. The second measure, lung severity score, lung high opacity score, is focused on the extent of disease in each lung lobe. The proposed method takes as an input a non-contrasted chest CT volume and segments the lesions, lungs, and lobes in three dimensions. We use a data set of more than 8,000 volumes to train the lung and lobe segmentation. The delineation of ground glass opacities and consolidations has been trained on about 1,400 COVID-19 RT-PCR confirmed CTs and 1,000 MERS and SARS and ILDs and normal CTs. A separate test of 100 control volumes and 100 COVID-19 positive volumes was used to evaluate the 3D delineation of lung and lobes and abnormalities. The ground truth was established under the supervision of multiple board certified radiologists. Our teams have annotated more than 1 million CT slices for this project. Here is the CT pneumonia analysis prototype. As we discussed, it calculates percentage of opacity, percentage of high opacity, uh, and the lung severity score and the lung high opacity score. Evaluation is reported on uh, on the CTs of 200 subjects, 100 COVID-19 confirmed and 100 controls from multiple centers in Europe, US, and Canada. Pearson correlation coefficient between the percentage of opacity and pred uh, uh, predicted by our method and the one given uh, by the ground route is 0.95 for the percentage of opacity and 0.98 for the percentage of high opacity. Here are a number of examples that compare the system output and the ground truth. The first row, the top left corner, shows a case with percentage of opacity 60.8% and uh, a PHO of 6.9%. In addition for this case, LSS is 14 and LHOS is 5 on a scale from 0 to 20. Note that the high opacity regions are identified using a threshold of minus 200 household units from the abnormality segmentation. The second project was to investigate if machine learning based classifiers using chest CT can distinguish COVID-19 from other pulmonary diseases and normal CTs and to study the interpretability of discriminative features for COVID-19 detection. Based on literature search, we have selected a number of discriminated image features for COVID-19, such as the percentage of opacity, high opacity, LSS, LHOS, bilaterality, percentage of peripheral and basal distribution, percentage of ground glass opacity, and so on and so forth. First, we employed a metric-based approach for unsupervised clustering of interpretable features and for, class, for, the classification, uh, uh, for their classification using logistic regression and random forest models. Um, the second um, 
part, in the second part, we define a deep learning based classifier based on features extracted directly from CT intensities and from the probability distribution of opacities. As you can see, the deep learning method resulted in the best AUC of 0 09 on a test set of 200 CTs that comprised 100 COVID 19 cases, 30 other pneumonias, 30 ILDs, and the rest normal CTs. The CT pneumonia analysis research prototype is available on, on our reading and interpretation platforms on single via open apps, single via frontier, AI Red companion research. As of mid July 2020, we have more than 300 installations in 39 countries with more than 14,000 process series. The detection of air space disease associated with COVID-19 and automatic computation of severity scores as provided by our system are useful in several scenarios. Number one, in the assessment of severity of disease since the system it delivers quantitative measurements. Number two, assessment of disease progression and prognosis. Number three, early detection of disease and in a post COVID-19 scenario for surveillance and incidental findings. Now, there are two clin clin critical elements for the success and fast deployment of this project. First, very close collaboration with frontline clinical sites. And the second, our Siemens Healthineers AI infrastructure and expertise that allowed us to move at a fast pace through all development steps. Let us move to the next level and how to integrate longitudinal data to help the patient's journey. Our current research is focused on an integrated approach for COVID-19 risk stratification. In essence, we feed demographic and clinical data in vitro diagnostic tests, imaging formation and clinical endpoints to train a deep profiler network to identify high risk patients. We focus to generate risk scores for general prognostics, uh, for the cytokine storm and for coagulopathy. On a more general term, we are in advanced development stages for the AI Pathway Companion system. AI Pathway Companion aims to be the next generation in clinical decision support systems, intelligently integrating relevant data using artificial intelligence technologies to facilitate diagnosis and treatment decisions along disease specific pathways. The system aims to intelligently integrate longitudinal patient data and correlate insights from imaging, pathology, lab, and genetics. The first focus is to map the patient status to the guidelines. Once the data flows through the system, one can train the network, uh, a network called Deep Profiler to optimize decision-making. For example, let us look at predicting the outcome of radiation therapy for lung cancer, more specifically, a stereotactic body radiotherapy. The question is, can the profiler differentiate patients with different response patterns? The answer is yes, by taking as an input the treatment parameters to more information and outcome data, we can learn the fingerprint to differentiate responder and non-responder groups. We have demonstrated that the local failure to radiation therapy can be reduced by 45% in the favorable subgroup and that AI can also help modulate therapy. Let us move forward and bring into the equation physio uh, physiology, the mechanistic approach of explaining how things work in addition to statistics. Let us focus on arrhythmias and cardiac resynchronization therapy, CRT. CRT is a common procedure. About uh, 150,000 patients per year in Europe and the US, about two, three hours procedure to implant a lead in the heart to synchronize the rhythm of the heart. The problem is that 30 to 50% of the patients are non-responders. There's a high demand to determine a priori if the patient will respond or not to optimize the lead placement and to personalize stimulation delays. 
With the, that problem in mind, let us introduce the concept of digital twin, multi-scale personalized physiological model of the patient's heart built from patient's data. The resulting heart model has similar dimensions electrical signal activation, muscle contraction, ejection fraction, pressure dynamics as the patient's heart. The difference is that such a model is under our control and we can virtually test therapy such as CRT, observe the outcome and select the best therapy for the patient. This has a fascinating potential and can change the practice of medicine by introducing more personalization and better care. We have a close collaboration on this topic with Heidelberg University in Germany and Johns Hopkins Medicine in the US to develop these models and translate them into clinic. To conclude, AI is a powerful instrument that helps us advancing from image analytics to disease pathways to digital twin. Now, Imagine that at some point in the future, our data is being integrated from birth through a lifelong physiological model that is updated with each scan and exam. And specifically design neural networks are analyzing our the data continuously. And as a result, we don't talk only about disease care, but we focus on health care, on person-centric prevention. When disease happens, we have the right tools to establish the correct diagnosis and select the best treatment. For this vision, many things have to evolve, specifically on the AI technology. Thank you so, so much for your attention.